above, or a view from the top of the molecule. Then you'll see a view from one side, a view down the axis of the central cleft, a view from the opposite side, and then we rotate back to the top. Now the first thing you wonder about such a structure is where do the DNA and RNA go during transcription? And you might reasonably guess uh, down this central cleft leading to uh, a magnesium ion indicated by this pink sphere that marks the active center of the molecule. Uh, proof that nucleic acids do bind in this cleft came from our uh, subsequent determination of the structure of RNA polymerase II in the act of transcription with both the DNA and RNA present. Uh, this was a problem that we pursued the entire time that we were striving to solve the polymerase alone. Uh, the problem that we faced was that even the most purified RNA polymerase preparations contain many inactive molecules, and these would unavoidably contaminate any preparation of transcribing complexes, so leading to another form of heterogeneity that would be an impediment to crystallization. <clears throat> that problem was, was overcome by Avi Ganon, who found a clever way of removing the inactive molecules, and soon after he uh, got crystals of transcribing complexes. Uh, these were, for the most part, very thin, and so the, the diffraction was anisotropic to the data were only complete to about six Armstrong's resolution. After literally years of trying and hundreds of crystals, he eventually got one with diffracted to 3.3, from which we could solve the structure. Um, by molecular replacement with that of the polymerase alone that I show you here. Now I'll show you the Ganon structure in a moment, but first a color code to what you will see in the structure and the subsequent slides. Uh, it was long known from biochemical studies that about 15 base pairs of DNA are unwound in the form of a so-called transcription bubble at the active center of polymerase molecules engaged in transcription. It was furthermore known, uh, again from biochemical studies, some eight to nine base pairs of DNA-RNA hybrid uh, <coughs> are centered within the bubble with the three prime or growing end of the RNA adjacent to the catalytic magnesium ion about three residues from the single strand duplex DNA junction. So in this and the slides to follow, the color code is blue for the template strand of the DNA, green for the non-template and red for the RNA. Now the next slide is a movie that is made from only two frames, and each is an actual crystal structure. So this first is the structure that I already showed you, you, you down the axis of the central cleft, uh, a chain trace of the RNA polymerase alone. And the second frame is the transcribing complex. And what you see from this diagram, from this structure, is indeed the DNA and RNA in red, bind in the central cleft, and you will furthermore have noticed a massive protein element that is colored here orange that we refer to as a clamp swings over the nucleic acids in the course of forming of the transcribing complex, swings a distance of some 30 angstroms in the course of forming the transcribing complex. Now what I'll do is rotate this structure to the right and then remove some of the protein from the front and this, I think, gives you the best view of RNA polymerase II in the act of gene transcription at atomic resolution. This is, of course, a backbone model derived from the structure, a backbone model of both nucleic acid and the protein. It shows the entire course of nucleic acids through the structure. Nucleic acid enters from the right uh, in this diagram, so transcription is from left to right. The DNA enters as B form, double helix. It unwinds three residues before the active center. Uh, there is a sharp bend in the template strand, in consequence of which the next residue is flipped 90 degrees and points downwards towards the floor of the active center cleft for readout and transcription. And in this structure, that base is paired to the one just added to the growing RNA chain. There are, in this structure, eight more DNA-RNA hybrid base pairs, and one more residue result on the coding strand of the DNA. The rest of that strand, the rest of the RNA, and all of the non-template DNA strand are not visible in this structure due to motion or disorder. You will furthermore have noticed a nearly 90-degree bend 
between the axis of the entering DNA and the axis of the exiting DNA-RNA hybrid. And that is in consequence of what we refer to as a wall of protein density that, black, that blocks straight passage uh, of the nucleic acids through the cleft. Now, what I'll do in the remaining time is tell you about two kinds of insight that can be gained from a uh, study of the structure. Uh, first, concerning the fundamental mechanism of transcription, and then secondly, concerning the interactions of the polymerase with the many additional factors that I have already mentioned. General transcription factors immediate are responsible for accurate initiation and appropriate regulation of transcription. In regard to the fundamental mechanism, I'll speak first about the way in which uh, the polymerase selects the right nucleotide for addition to the growing RNA chain. Uh, so the question of the fidelity of transcription and how it is achieved. This, of course, is really the essence of transcription, uh, the accurate readout of the genetic message. Now, <clears throat> in work done just in the past few months and published only last week in the cell, we finally believe we've come to understand the basis for the fidelity of transcription. And to explain uh, that work to you very briefly, uh, what I'll do is zoom in on just the template strand of the DNA and RNA near the active center, remove all the protein except for the alpha helix that is colored here in green that we refer to as a bridge helix. So here in the upper left of this next slide, uh, you see the structure uh, that I have uh, just shown with the template strand of the DNA, the RNA, the bridge helix. The nucleotide just <coughs> added uh, to the growing RNA is in this diagram colored yellow uh, to highlight for the purpose of discussion. In a subsequent structure, the nucleic acids have translocated across the polymerase surface. Now the nucleotide just added has advanced to the next position. Uh, the nucleotide addition site is available for entry of another substrate, nucleoside triphosphate. Uh, in yet additional structures that we have solved, uh, we see all four nucleoside triphosphates can enter and bind to what we refer to as an entry site in an inverted orientation, only a nucleoside triphosphate that is correctly matched for pairing to the coding base of the template strand will rotate into the addition site for phosphodiester bond formation and growth of the RNA chain. Now, this series of structures showed a complete transcription cycle. What the structures did not show was the solution of the problem to which I have just alluded, namely the mechanism by which the polymer selects the right nucleotide for addition to the growing chain. Uh, in these structures, there was no evidence of any protein contact with the correctly matched nucleoside triphosphate. The energy of hydrogen bonding, of the two or three hydrogen bonds that would be formed in base pairing, is far less than sufficient to account for the high fidelity of transcription. Uh, the mystery was only removed recently when uh, Don Wong and Dave Bushnell screened hundreds and hundreds of crystals and obtained uh, data of higher quality and better resolution. What they found was in structures with correctly matched nucleotide in the addition site, a feature termed the trigger loop, shown here in purple or in a superimposed structure in yellow, was now in proximity to the nucleotide. And to illustrate that a bit better, what you see is the bridge helix to which I alluded previously is really too far to make from the nucleotide to make contact. I should mention that the nucleotide is shown here in orange for a purine, in blue for a pyrimidine. Both structures were separately solved, and the corresponding uh, trigger loops are purple and yellow. The bridge helix is much too far to make contact, as I already indicated. It does, however, interact with the coding base on the template strand, and that's a point I'll return to later of some significance. The trigger loop is in close proximity and makes extensive interaction with the nucleoside triphosphate in the addition site. It <clears throat> now, the trigger loop had previously been seen in, a, in many structures. It's so far been seen in a dozen 